What's up guys, welcome to the tutorial on how to make an anime or toon skin shader. This shader is gonna be quite procedural, so you can tweak it however you want. And also we are going to use Cyclos Render Engine, so you can bake the result and use it as image texture. Before we start, I have to tell you that this shader method is based on your mesh topology and poly. So in other words, if your mesh is too low poly, it won't work well. But if you want to use this shader on low poly mesh, you have to make a copy of your mesh first, then convert it to high poly manually or using subsurface modifier. After that, you can use the texture result from high poly to your low poly mesh. I'm going to use my high poly mesh just for creating the texture through shader. So the texture result is going to be used on my lower poly mesh. First, change the render engine to cyclist. So that we can bake texture and use to node later. Add a sunlight source for the shadow. Basically, you get the shadow based on the rotation of the sunlight object. We are going to use the render preview quite often because the shadow result is only appear on render preview. The war color and strength is basically the main brightness of your texture. I forgot that we should use the denoise render on viewport, so you better activate it to speed the render preview. Go to your sun object, then rename it to middle light, because this light is gonna be the middle highlight controller, basically the one that made the shadow on my female mesh belly. About the strength value, it's based on how many sunlight you wanna use. So for example, I want to use 3 sunlight, that means the light strength I can use for a balance like result is 1 divided by 3. So that's gonna be 0.333. In my case, I want the middle light more brighter than the other two sunlight. So if I want the middle light to have 0.5 strength, that means I have to add 0.25 strength for the other two sun. For now, we are going to stick with the one sunlight. The shadow should be looking similar like this. Just for a quick preview for this shader, change the X rotation of the sunlight to 20. Now I want to add more sun for highlighting left and right part of the body. So just duplicate the sun object then rename it to something like right light. Then I want to set this light strength to 0.25. Make this light to looking at the right rib bone or around value 71 for the X rotation and 17 for the Y rotation. Then do the mirrored right light setting for the left light. Okay, so this is just the default lighting setting. This setup is just to make the shader creation easier. You can tweak this lighting settings or even change it later. For now, just make sure your mesh shadow behaving like this. The back part should be darker like this, but we'll fix it later. This is optional. Split the viewport for the back and front part of the mesh because we are going to frequently check these parts. Change the middle like X rotation to somewhere around negative 45. The point is just to make the both part have a balanced shadow or brightness, like this. Now for the center part, do the split viewport again if you want. For the base color, let's add Toon Shader BSTF with Diffuse Mode. Duplicate the Toon BSDF node, then add a Mix Shader for combining the both Toon BSDF. I also have a Node Wrangler Adder installed. It's optional, it's just for previewing any node combination result. 
So after you connect both tune setter to the mix node and preview it, it should be looking like this. You can use my setup value for reference, but the point is you have to make the chest and pelvis shadow more visible. So it's normal if you have a different setup value. Duplicate the bottom tune BSDF node and the mix setter. Then connect the previous mix setter and the tune to this mix setter. Set the new tune node to value higher than the previous top node. The point is to make the dark color brighter. Then change this mix setter effect to around 0.3. Now the shadow is should be not too dark. Now I want to use frame on this node. It's optional though. I just want to make things more organized because there will be a lot of node later. Now add a RGB node for controlling the base color. Connect the RGB node to all of the two nodes. Now set your skin color on RGB node. Okay, so that was it for the base color. Next part is we are going to add a stepping color. Basically, we make the color and the shadow become less smooth on the gradient. First, add a texture coordinate. It's basically for getting the shadow direction data from like source. Then, I just want the shadow that come from top to bottom. Basically, from the middle light, not right and left light. To do that, we can use separate XYZ node. Connect the generate texture coordinate output to XYZ node. Then, if you preview the XYZ node, if it's the X output, it's showing the horizontal shadow on my mesh, the Y output is the vertical, and the Z is the front and back. Usually, you are not using the Z, but sometimes you want to use, you can use it. I want to use the Y and Z output. To do that, we can use the math node with the multiply operation. If you just want to use the Y output, you can skip this math node. As you can see, it's only for the front shadow. We need to make the back shadow appear as well. To do that, we just need to invert this front shadow. Next thing we need to do is just multiply the back and the front, so it's combined. Okay, so we got the standard shadow, now we need to make the shadow stepping. To do that, we can use map rank node. Basically, we make the shadow value round, but using more parameter rank. Now connect the multiply value output to map rank value, then change the map rank operation to step linear. In the map rank node, your value should be different to mine. It's possible to have the same value though, so just use my value as a reference. So first thing is, we wanna get rid the pure black color. To do that, we just need to adjust the two mean value. Usually, we just need to increase it. Apply the value for the both map rank node. If you want a brighter highlight skin color, you can tweak the from mean value. Usually, you decrease the value to make the highlight brighter. The top map rank node is for the front part of the body and the bottom one is for the back. So you can tweak both of them however you want. But be careful not to make too much difference because the shadow can be looks unstable. Now I want to see front and back part combined. We can use a mix RGB node for that. In the mix RGB node, there is a lot of operation you can choose. You can choose any operation you want. I'm going to use overlay and also the effect value as well. You can tweak it however you want. If you see some small shadow or highlight part you don't like like this, just ignore it for now. We'll fix that later. Let's add some color. We just need to duplicate this mix RGB. 
choose multiplayer operation, then connect the main color RGB. These value nodes are not necessary to add, this is just for making me sure that I was using the same value for both map ring. Now we are finally done with this stepping color nodes group. We just need to output this color to the diffuse BSDF node. Now for the last group node, it's gonna be combining the base tune color with stepping color, and also smoothing the part that we don't want with a diffuse node. Add a mix setter to combine the tune base with stepping color node group. You can adjust the fact value later, for now let's leave it at 0.5. Add a translucent BSDF node with a bright contrast node, then connect it with the main color node. Add more mix shader to mix the translucent with the previous mix shader. Set the fact around 0.2. Tweak the bright contrast node now if you want, just to make the skin not too dark or too bright. To delete or smooth certain part shadow or highlight, you need to add a vertex color node. You also need mix shader to mix the diffuse. We are going to use the vertex color node as the mask. The mask is basically to tell Blender where it has to be, the diffuse node or the stepping color. The vertex color node is connected to the fact value mix shader, and the diffuse BSDF is connected to the other shader input. We are also at invert node because the default color of vertex color is all white, so we can just paint the certain part we want to be diffused to black color. The vertex color node is have an empty parameter. It's like a canvas for us to paint the vertex color, so we have to add that first. Now for the last thing before we paint, we gotta add the node that act as the deleted or removed result. Yep, the diffuse node. Also, don't forget to set the same color as the main RGB node to the diffuse node or any replacement. After you insert the call canvas to vertex color node, change the object mode to vertex paint to start painting. Use draw mode and put the strength to 1 or any value you want. Remember, black color for the diffuse, white color for stepping color. If your mask is symmetrical, you should enable the mirror painting for the x-axis. So the painting progress is gonna be paint the part, wait for the pixel gone, check the result, and then repeat until you're satisfied. That's it for the shader part. Now you can tweak everything again if you want. Then you can bake the texture like usual. Usually after I bake the texture, I'm going to edit the texture image with image editor like Photoshop. So yep, this method is not really perfect, but it's better than creating the base color from scratch in my opinion. I hope you learned something new, thanks for watching and cheers!